Hello and welcome to the video and I hope you're all good. Now today we're looking at an exciting piece of kit that I think is going to be really useful for photographers and videographers and certainly speed up your workflow. Now I do have to mention that Toolbox sent me this out to try but I'm not being paid or in any way influenced by them and in fairness the channel itself isn't sponsored so if you want to support the channel I'll leave some details at the end of the video how you can do that. I'll also be leaving uh, chapter markers down below the video so if you want to skip to the bits that are most relevant for you please feel free to take a look at those. But let's get into the review. So what is this and what does it do? Now in the most basic sense it's literally just a piece of hardware that will talk to whatever software you're using and allow you to have some physical controls where otherwise you might need to use a mouse and with examples like Lightroom where you're trying to control sliders with a mouse it's not the most natural movements and things so these physical dials and things are a lot more intuitive way of controlling that software. Now the first thing I thought when I saw this was it looks a little bit strange and it doesn't look very intuitive to use. However, I promise you it does become like second nature and looking at all the different controls and dials and stuff, you've got over 40 plus customizable things that you can do with this, um, including multi-button touch controls and uh, like I say, all the various different dials and controls that you can assign to various tasks within whatever software you're using and take full control of that software using this item. So this device is built with photographers and videographers in mind. Anybody that's using basically uh, media, so photos and videos and things, and need something to help control their edits. It'll allow you to scrub through timelines, it'll allow you to make fine adjustments in terms of photos and editing uh, using those sliders. So it really is built with creators in mind. So in essence, what this is designed to do is to take away the need to use things like keyboard shortcuts and using a mouse in a situation where it isn't the most easy way to do things. I always find that controlling exposure levels and things like that in Lightroom isn't the most intuitive thing to do using a mouse. So having something with physical dials and things certainly lets you take more finite control and just feels more natural when you're trying to use it. However, one of the really cool things about using the toolbox is actually the software that comes with it, which we'll take a look at in a second. But what the, uh, what the software allows you to do is customize the unit so that you can change what each dial and each button does within the parameters of the software that you're using, obviously. Um, but it really does mean that you can make this kind of thing your own. It isn't just one set thing that you pick up and everybody has to use it the same way. You'll find your own shortcuts and buttons that work better for you doing certain tasks. And that really customizable software that accompanies the toolbox just opens up a world of possibilities for you. This is the actual toolbox software itself and it's really intuitive. So basically you have a preset list up in the top left hand corner and it shows you which software setup you're working on. So as you can see, I've got Final Cut highlighted. So any of the presets that I add to this are going to be used within Final Cut and you can add more pieces of software to that. Anything that's going to basically support hardware control uh, anything that you shortcuts in, you should be able to assign to the toolbox. Um, in the bottom left hand corner here, you've got a visual guide just to show you again which uh, buttons do what, just so that you know what you're assigning to each button. But most importantly, we've got our preset settings here. Uh, so we can take a look, there's a little visual guide again showing you which button is set to what, and then you add whatever command you want to it. So for instance, within Final Cut, I'm using this button here, the tool button, uh, to actually play. So that will actually, when I press that, it will start play on the, on the playback. So if I double click on that, I can go in and as you can see, you can just add whatever um, shortcut you want, whatever keyboard shortcut you want to that. Um, which is really, really useful. Um, I basically went onto the internet, found the list of the most used a, uh, keyboard shortcuts and basically just went and copied and pasted them into the shortcuts as well. You have some further controls, built-in functions and stuff over here on the right. So if you was to say, take a look at the Lightroom software, you can go into some of these most used functions and literally just click on them and assign them to that button. So you don't even need to look for the shortcuts. It really is that simple just to add them in. 
um, but this was a real simple process getting it set up I think the most important part is working out in your own mind what each button is going to make sense for each command for you like I say so for instance for the play button I've got that set up as a tool button there and the blade button to actually make a cut within Final Cut is the short button next to it so I can literally play pause then hit the blade button to to make a cut now whenever you've got the toolbox um, plugged into your computer and it's actually in use you also have this little control key down on the right hand side which is always present it gives you a little bit of a visual reminder of some of those things as well so if you're in Lightroom for instance it will show you uh, you click on the the button that associates with that it's a bit of a reminder of what's used for what things within that software so that's really useful as well so one of the next things to talk about is the actual build quality itself i was surprised by the weight to the unit it's definitely got a little bit of heft to it which is great because when it's on your desk it means it's not going to be sliding around and moving around and things um, it feels pretty sturdy, it feels like it's going to last for a number of years and all the controls and buttons and things like I say are very tactile, they all have a very satisfying click. Uh, the dials and things have like a nice rotation to them as well so you really feel like you've got good control over it, it doesn't feel flimsy in any way. So one of the first things that I thought of when I looked at the toolbox was it looks a little bit strange, like I don't see how that's going to be intuitive to use. But honestly, when you pick it up and you start to take a look around, it starts to make a little bit more sense. The idea behind this is that you never have to look at it. You learn where your controls are and it just sits on the desk and it becomes intuitive in the same way that you'd use a normal mouse. And I was very, very skeptical over how that would work. But I must admit, all the different shapes and things on the actual toolbox itself start to give you this kind of idea of where things are how it's laid out and you can just pick each dial up by touch uh, it really is like quite intuitive once you know what you've got set to certain buttons and things if you use it for long enough it does become second nature so i was very skeptical over the look of it and how it would work but was really surprised when i actually got into the using of it uh, and it does <laughs> start to become second nature if I'd got any kind of minor kind of gripes with the actual look and feel of it, the only thing that I would say is it seems to pick up kind of greasy marks on the on the surface the more you use it and things, which is absolutely fine. It takes two seconds to wipe it down and it looks as good as new. Uh, and in fairness, maybe I just need to wash my hands before I use it. But it does seem to pick up a few marks. But honestly, that is a real minor in terms of how much you're going to be using this thing anyway. So now I'm in Final Cut and I'm just going to show you how I've got this set up. Now like I say, I, I really just wanted to do a few basic things but do those things very well. Uh, so I've got it set up the way that works for me, you might want to set it up slightly differently. So we're using the actual project that I'm working on to do this toolbox review so it's all a little bit meta. We're looking at the, uh, the actual review that I'm making. So if I can just show you how I'm using it. So I've literally just got the playhead set to the tool button there. I've got the blade tool so I can make a, a cut during that. If I've made a mistake I've got an undo button so you know I can very quickly without even thinking just make a cut there, make a cut there and then select and remove that piece. It takes literally seconds if I've made a mistake I can do that and if I click the undo button a few times again I've gone back to exactly where I need to be. I can zoom in and out of the timeline using this dial here. Um, you know, I can frame by frame move along the playhead using this one dial, and I've got various different things set up. So I've got the, the button on the left hand side set up to go into the uh, other controls there, and just various different buttons uh, set up to do different things. So copy and paste, and like I say, I can remove pieces using that so again selecting anything I want there and removing those clips so really within seconds I'm moving around the timeline doing exactly what I want to do so if I want to take some like real finite controls I want to zoom in check the audio levels I'm gonna make a cut there cut there select that remove that it's it's seconds to do all of these things I'm not looking at the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts and things I don't have to look away from the screen it's really intuitive all of these buttons and dials and things are set up in such a way 
that I already know what dial I'm touching just from the feel and the shape of those so it really does become like second nature and I can very quickly edit a whole video and barely have to touch the keyboard at all I've got one hand on the mouse one hand on the toolbox and it's just such an intuitive way of editing now there's a lot more detail that you can go into you can set these up with different profiles for different things so if you're doing things like color grading you can uh, have a profile that's set up for specifically for that so the dials and things that do different things you've got kind of got to let your imagination run wild with it and however you want to get this set up but the quickest thing for me is being able to take a load of raw footage get it edited down into something that's usable and it's so much quicker using the toolbox, so much quicker for me to do that and actually get a project into pretty decent shape, literally within minutes using this, just having those very basic controls that just save me so much time. So yeah, very impressed with this. So just very briefly, just to show you how I use the, the toolbox within Lightroom, I'm really only using one of the controls, even though, as I say, you can set up all of these custom buttons to do pretty much whatever you want them to do. The only thing that I really want to use is this main dial here, just so I can take really finite control over some of the sliders. So if I hover the mouse over the exposure and then literally just turn that dial, you can see that I've got really good control over the exposure levels. And rather than clicking and trying to slide around with the mouse and things, I can literally just make ever so subtle changes with that one dial. Now, these buttons, as I say, can be assigned to do pretty much whatever you want them to do. But the biggest gripe that I've had with other controllers that I've used is, you know, them being a little bit over complex, trying too hard to do too many different things. And all I want to be able to do with a physical tr controller like this is replace the mouse and, you know, take real finite control. So if I hover over the black slider there and I can just gently move that however I want. And the cool thing about this, a really useful thing for me, is all the time I'm looking at the screen, I'm not actually looking at any of the software or looking at the, the slider bar to see where I am with it. I've literally just got the, the mouse hovered over the slider. I'm not even touching the mouse and I'm just using this dial to make whatever fine adjustments that I want. So it really does free you up to, to edit in a much more natural way um, and that really works for me. So what are my final thoughts on the toolbox? Now, in fairness, I have used various different controllers in the past for various different pieces of software and things, and I've always struggled. There's never really been one thing that's just absolutely nailed everything I want it to do, and it's just worked for me. And I think, in all honesty, the toolbox is probably about the closest that I've come to a perfect little unit like this, something that's just easy to use. I think ones that I've used in the past have been maybe a little bit too complex and almost like trying too hard. Um, the, the basic nature of this really works and when you customise it to work how you want it to work. So like I say, the, the controls that I've got set up might not work for you and vice versa. But the way that I have this set up really works for me and I'm incredibly happy with it. If I could give one piece of advice to people, I would probably recommend choosing whatever piece of software is most important to you, so whether that's a photo editing piece of software or video editing, and learn the dials based around that one thing. So for me, I do a lot of video editing, that's the most time consuming thing that I do, so I use this purely for video editing. I don't use it as much with things like Lightroom or Photoshop, and that's so that the controls become second nature. When you're switching between software, you've got different controls for different pieces of software, it's almost like you have to relearn it every time you do it. Now, if you've got a great memory, fair play to you, it might work well for you. But personally, I'm just using this mainly with uh, Final Cut, and that's what all the kind of memory is built around. The only other thing that I do use is in Lightroom. I find it much easier to use the actual tactile controls to control some of the sliders. But mainly used for Final Cut, and it's been excellent. Would I recommend it? Absolutely, I think it's well worth giving a go. Try and see how it works for you. Um, and I'll leave a link below to Toolbox's website where you can check out the, the product for yourself as well. So be sure to check out that. Uh, but yeah, great little piece of kit and look forward to using it more. So I did say at the start of the video how you can support the channel. Now, this channel isn't sponsored. I don't receive any payment for anything that I'm doing. Uh, I get a tiny, tiny bit of ad revenue that literally, you know, probably afford to buy me a bag of chips each month or something like that 
but I really don't receive any kind of payment. So with some of the videos that I've got coming up, looking at some of the old film cameras and things like that, lots of things that I buy, I have to use my own money. So if you do want to support the channel, help me to grow, help me to make future videos, I'll leave a link below how you can make donations to help support the channel. But if that's beyond you, please don't feel like you have to do that. Just giving the video a like or subscribing to the channel if you like the videos is certainly plenty to help me grow. So appreciate your time, hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in another one. Mm -hmm.